Well, this should be fun. Shining a light on autism and life as an autistic person. Welcome to My Friend Autism, a podcast breaking down barriers, stigma and misconceptions around autism while increasing understanding and acceptance of the autistic community. And now, here's your neurodivergent host, Orion Kelly. Welcome, my friend. Great to see you. Take that back. I can't see you. Can you imagine? You start listening to you, your favorite podcast. The host comes on and goes, I see you. <laughs> I can it's not just chill. Just chill, okay? <laughs> like you have smart devices that could somehow spy on you. <laughs> Hang on a second. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> just forget about it. It's not worth it. Don't encourage me. Uh, what did I say? I've forgotten. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about providing validation and support for autistic people and their loved ones. And welcome, my friend, to my podcast, ironically also called My Friend Autism. It's a video podcast you can watch on a purpose-built, dedicated podcast YouTube channel, Orion Kelly Podcast, or you might be just listening to it right now without seeing me. And that's a much better option I would have thought. But anyway, you're listening to it wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for doing it either way. I appreciate it. And I want to be very clear at the start of this uh, podcast. Uh, if you're used to watching me on YouTube and it's nice and concise, you've come to the wrong place. This could be, it's, it's quite possible, guys. This could be one of the most loose, untouched, unedited, you know, long-winded podcast discussions you've ever been a part of. And I think you're cool with that. That's why you're here. So let's get into it. I want to talk about selective amnesia and how it relates to autistic people. Let's try and look into what many may think is this memory mystery. It's not a mystery, in fact. It's selective amnesia. Is it connected to autism? Well, it is, and I can tell you how. You just need to listen or watch and look at the words at the bottom. Uh, selective amnesia. Okay, so it's it's a memory phenomenon. It's characterized. See, how do they how do they trip over characterized but not phenomenon? I would have thought phenomenon would have, would have tripped me up, but it didn't. Phenomenon was fine. It was characterized that got me. It, characterized by the inability to recall specific events, experiences, or details while retaining memory or other information. Inability to recall specific events, experiences, or details while retaining memory for other information. Let's give you some examples. Selective amnesia. Oh, this is before we get to the autism connection, okay? So, selective amnesia. How does it manifest? So, memory gaps, right? You might experience significant memory gaps, and these would usually be related to specific life events or experiences, Point one on just the general examples, and you should, as an autistic person, you probably already are starting to resonate with this. Is it just me or is it hard to remember like large chunks of school or childhood as an autistic person? Maybe, maybe that's just me. Another example, selective forgetting. <laughs> it can involve selectively forgetting emotional, distressing or traumatic events. So, you're, so you, you don't recall emotionally distressing or traumatic events, even ones that occurred recently. Now, that's interesting. As autistic people, it's fair to say, <clears throat> I don't mean this in like an overdramatic way, but it's fair to say that emotionally distressing or traumatic events can happen pretty regularly for autistic people. As in, you probably have had some, just by being out in the real world, that have occurred recently. But if I asked you to name them all, I bet you couldn't. I could ask my son. I bet he couldn't. Now, why is that? Not because it hasn't happened. Not because there isn't bullying in the schoolyard or, right, or discrimination or whatever in the real world. But because potentially there's so many of them, it just becomes like, oh, well, that's not something to remember. That's just normal, which is even worse. Now, these memory gaps, they lead to confusion and frustration, which sounds like something that the controller would say on, on Thomas. Right? Orion, you've caused confusion and frustration. I think it's more delay, but you see what I'm saying. The confusion and frustration, not just for you, but for people around you. What do you mean you don't remember that? That happened yesterday. Are you serious? What was wrong with you? Repetitive events. So selective amnesia 
can cause people to forget repetitive events or routine, even if they've participated in them numerous times. So, for example, an autistic person may repeatedly forget their daily schedule or the steps to perform a routine task. That's an interesting one, right? Sorry, give me the steps again on how to do this really normal, standard, basic routine task that you think is easy. Is that, is that, is that something that resonates? <clears throat> how about conversations? It's not uncommon for someone with left it. You know, I can't edit this out because I just don't have the mental capacity to make podcasts and clean them up because what's the point? It's just a podcast that people listen to for fun. So <clears throat> let me just say what I was trying to say. God help me. It's not uncommon for someone who experiences selective amnesia to have difficulty recalling the details of recent conversations, including who they talked to, what was discussed, when the conversation took place. Man, that resonates. How about directions and navigation? So you may struggle with remembering directions or like, you know, the the ways to get the things, right? In some countries, you may say, like, the route. That wouldn't go down so well in Australia. If you, if you can't remember your routes, then you probably weren't doing it right. <clears throat> Leave it there. Uh, so it makes it more challenging to navigate familiar and unfamiliar places, even if you've been there before. That's a weird experience, but it's real. How about appointments and commitments? So let's say you're an autistic person with selective amnesia. You actually may forget your own scheduled appointments, your own commitments, deadlines. I know I do. I don't know how many times I've booked appointments in and then they, 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 I get like a reminder the day before or something and it surprises me. I'm like, oh, man, I don't, I'm not ready for this. I didn't realise this was happening. And then even after that reminder the day before, it's like I forgot about it on the day. The reminder came the day before. What's the point of reminding us the day before? Anyway, this is what they think. So what happens then? Well, you, you miss things. Not only do you miss opportunities, right? You miss social difficulties. That doesn't make any sense. Let's start that again. Not only do you miss opportunities, but it leads to social difficulties, right? Because what's happening is, well, if you're making commitments and then forgetting about them, that's going to create further barriers, right? Names and faces. Oh, man, this is not good for me. Remembering names and faces, particularly challenging. Someone with selective amnesia may have difficulty recognising or recalling names. And I'm talking about people you've actually met before. Dates and special occasions. It also may affect your ability to remember important dates. You know what they mean. I don't know why I've got to give you examples. You know what important dates are, right? Yeah, yeah. Birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, that kind of stuff. Well, that's obviously going to impact relationships. What about learning? How about autistic kids? They may struggle with selective, with selective amnesia. Now, can I just stop for a second? Autistic people can have, a tr- can have trouble. This is happening right now, so I might as well bring it to light. Some days your brain is going faster than your body can keep up. Today, for some reason, maybe it's because I'm trying to be productive. My brain is going faster than my mouth can keep up. This is a classic autistic happening and you're you're experiencing it right now for some reason right now my brain is going faster than my mouth can keep up so a lot of times i'm tripping over words now well that's great thanks for sharing that ryan my kid does it too okay well here's the thing so what i'm telling myself now is i've acknowledged that and i'm gonna now try to talk like i'm in slow motion i'm gonna tell my brain talk like it's in slow motion and I bet you'll now find it a normal pace. Okay, so that's what you can tell your kid. Let's just practice for a second. How about we just pretend we're talking in slow motion? Let's do that. <clears throat> okay. Autistic students may struggle with selective amnesia when it comes to retaining information learned in school. That obviously makes it necessary to revisit topics multiple times just to remember them. That was me talking in slow motion. How about personal achievements? Individuals who experience selective amnesia may forget their own accomplishments. How is this not relatable? Achievements. You might forget milestones. What happens then? It diminishes your sense 
of personal progress and success. So yes, this is in my mind, this sounds like I'm talking in slow motion. In your mind, it probably sounds normal, but a lot easier to listen to than when my brain was getting past my mouth and I was allowing it to continue. I'm telling my brain, okay, let's just try to practice talking in slow motion because it sounds like we're not, we're not able to talk to our mouth properly today. <laughs> You're getting an insight. You're welcome. How about events with emotional significance? Okay, so memory gaps can be especially pronounced for events that carry emotional significance. What does that mean? Family gatherings, celebrations, personal achievements. How about sensory memories? Can affect the retention of sensory memories. So like the taste of your favorite food, the feeling of a comforting texture. Hey, you know that that thing you really love the feel of? What does it feel like? I don't know. You know your favorite food, how would you describe how it tastes? Good? Good? I like it. But what does it taste like? I don't know. Oh, what's that taste? Well, what am I tasting here? Salt? <laughs> like, do you see what I'm saying? What about medication and health? If you're experiencing selective amnesia, you're going to struggle to remember not only your medication schedules, but also the doses and all the important related information. Now, that's obviously going to impact you in in quite bad ways, but certainly you impact your well-being. I can't tell you how many times I forget to take medication or tablets or I'm supposed to take a certain amount and then I don't remember how many I took. And it's like, well, I can't take, I can't try to make it up or do it again because that, that could be bad. So it's just very, fr- I hate that. It's very frustrating. Social interactions. Can you remember the details of social interactions? So who was present in this interaction? Who was there? What did you chat about? What were they chatting about? What was the context of the interaction? That is really challenging to remember those things if you experience selective amnesia. Practical skills. I touched on this. Autistic people, right, we experience selective amnesia with practical skills. I'm talking about even cooking your own favourite meal, performing specific tasks you do regularly. Now, how does that look? Maybe you're a, a parent or a carer, a teacher, a partner. Um, the experience would be you would need to repeatedly provide the same guidance to the autistic person in your life to complete these tasks successfully. And for an autistic person, you would quite wrongly, because it hurts people when you say stuff like this, but you're, quite, you're doing it, it's wrong to do this, but I get it, I say it too is, well, you never taught me how to do that. Why, why can you teach me how to do this in the first place? Well, how do you do this, right? And, and that hurts because they, they did teach you. The problem with autistic people is, and this selective amnesia is a great example, because we never processed it or understood it, we never remembered that you, tr- you I mean, in your mind, you taught us, you, but in our mind, you tried to teach us. It didn't work. It failed, so we didn't learn, so therefore we didn't remember you taught us because in factual terms, you didn't. Like you... To teach someone, does, does teaching someone incorporate them actually being able to successfully learn what you're teaching? Or does teaching just incorporate you spitting out information and it's up to them if they take it or not? But if once you've spat it out, your teaching job is done. I would have thought that's not correct. The teaching job isn't done until the information you've spat out has been digested, processed and retained. But anyway, that's a, you know, like the autistic person in your life needing repeated guidance to complete the same tasks successfully is not uncommon. Now, the last one before we get onto the connection to autism is about emotional episodes. Okay, so selective amnesia actually affects the memory of emotional episodes. What are they? Meltdowns, shutdowns, burnout, autistic rage, which is in effect outbursts, right? Emotional outbursts. I've done a video on it recently you're listening to this podcast in in 2026 it wasn't recently anyway other things could be good things like intense joy happiness right remembering those emotional episodes is hard now the problem with that is if you can't remember those emotional episodes how can you understand and process your own emotional experiences Mm, good question orion good question 
the connection to autism. Yeah, great, Orion. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. But how is selective amnesia connected to autism? Let's start with sensory overload. All right, so we're talking about autistic people now. That's a given. I don't have to say it every 10 seconds. You get now. I'm talking about autistic people. Okay, so let's say an autistic person experiences sensory overload, right? And we know this is the case. The senses are overwhelmed or underwhelmed, whatever it is, by environmental stimuli. Okay, cool. This constant sensory bombardment can actually sometimes lead to selective amnesia because, now this is really, I find this fascinating, because in that moment of sensory overwhelm, the brain is prioritizing processing the sensory information over storing memories. Am I the only person that finds this interesting? This is bloody interesting. So when an autistic person is overwhelmed, right, is dysregulated from sensory overwhelm, their brain is actually prioritizing processing that, of which they cannot, right, because it's overwhelming them, over storing memories. So whatever memories were required to be retained in that period will never be retained. And then you go, hang on a second, Orion, you had a massive meltdown yesterday. How do you not remember that? It's like, I just remember there being like really horrible smells and loud noises. That's all I remember. Yeah, yeah, but did that made you have a meltdown? I don't rem- Sorry, I don't remember the meltdown. I just remember being overwhelmed by these noises. and st- See what I'm saying? And you wonder, so autistic people don't lie when they say, I'm sorry, I really don't remember that experience. I just remember being overwhelmed by something. How, 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 like, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I find that so fascinating. What about emotional regulation? Okay, so you've got autistic people. You know, as well as I know, we can face challenges in emotional regulation. Our brain may selectively forget emotionally distressing events as a coping mechanism to protect our mental well-being. How good, is, how good is that, by the way? You know about this, the, the self-preservation part of the brain. Now, this obviously can be beneficial because it's obviously preventing excessive emotional distress, but it can also result in fragmented or incomplete memories. As an autistic person and as a late diagnosed myself, Can you really resonate with that, the idea that you have fragmented or incomplete memories looking back on your life? Man, I can. So let's talk briefly about the whole kind of sensory overload and memory things. I told you I just think it's kind of fascinating. I love this idea. It has been like bits of research that have basically shown that sensory overload, as you know, is common, impacts memory processing. So overloaded sensory systems prioritize sensory information over the encoding and retrieval of memories. It also feeds into working memory. Studies have indicated working memory, so the ability to temporarily hold and manipulate information, which I believe, and this is my understanding, can be a real challenge for autistic people certainly autistic kids in school trying to learn, right? So this, this ability, this working memory to temporarily hold and manipulate information is impaired for one reason or another for autistic people as just a standard challenge. Now, this affects our ability to remember and process information in real time, okay? So these are examples of how selective amnesia can actually manifest, is connected to autistic people. How about what we like to, you know, we call it our, our stims, our passions. Other people might call it repetitive behaviours and routines. Okay, so we rely on those, right? We rely on routines. We rely on our stim, our, our repetitive soothing activities to manage our regulation in a world designed to dysregulate us. Well, research has explored these routines and rituals and how they can actually influence memory and cognitive processing. Uh, No, I'm not going to take that any further because I just want to point out that in doing so, in in doing these stims, special interests, that can actually influence our cognitive processing. Again, an example of how there's this connection between being autistic and having selective amnesia. Attention to detail. There is some research that suggests autistic people tend to pay more attention to detail. Oh, duh. 
Now, that influences our memory recall. So it makes it more likely for us to remember specific details but potentially miss broader contextual information. That's a good one to remember, especially if, if you're a loved one of an autistic person. Do you find that the autistic person in your life is a real kind of details person, another way of putting it, a real stickler? But, of course, the thing about being a stickler is everything's black and white, but that's not true in life, right? There's, there's broader context to things, but we miss that because we're stuck on the details, the minutia. That's an impact. Emotional Emotional memory processing. What about this one? There's, there's been some studies that have explored the connection between emotional processing and memory. Autistic people may have unique emotional responses, which can actually affect how we remember emotional events. Have you heard of semantic memory? This basically involves like general knowledge, facts, right? All right, there is some research that's shown autistic people may actually excel in specific domains of semantic memory. Think about it. This is a memory involving facts, <laughs> general knowledge. Autistic people have passions in specific topics. We want to learn facts, everything. We remember them. Ask the autistic person in your life if they could remember a loved one's birthday. Maybe not. Can they provide you? with intricate facts and details on a specific topic? Yes. How about episodic memory? So episodic memory is recalling specific events. Oh, really? Ep episodes? Uh, it, right. Yeah. And, their, and their details. So recording, recording, recalling details and specific events. <laughs> now, episodic memory processing can actually influence how autistic people remember personal experiences. Again, I'm not going into this. I'm just, I'm just showing you a connection that being autistic actually influences the way we remember personal experiences. In other words, there's a difference with how autistic people recall specific events and their associated details. Again, I'm just highlighting how this, this can be a connection between autism and selective amnesia. How about prospective memory? Or, in other words, the ability to remember to perform planned actions in the future. <laughs> so think about this, right? Our, our particular love and focus on daily routines and tasks. So if let's say non-autistic people don't spe specifically you know, have a massive focus on daily routine and tasks and sameness, but autistic people do, how that could feed into an ability to remember to perform planned actions in the future. Memory interventions. Hmm. I don't know about this one. Look, there's been a little bit of research. It's basically examined the effectiveness of memory interventions and strategies for autistic people. You know, it's providing, it's looking to provide insights into memory challenges and, you know, how they can be addressed and improved. I only wanted to highlight that they're looking into this, but I guess more for the point that this is the issue with a lot of research into the autistic community. It's done by non-autistic people, which is okay, but without the, without using the autistic community. And, and what are we trying to address here, by the way? All right. I want to talk about the main impact here and how it can, you know, really affect your life. But just one last little connection piece. So we're talking about individual differences. So there are studies that highlight significant individual differences in memory and cognition profiles among autistic people. And this obviously talks about a need to find those supports at work on a personalised individual basis with memory-related challenges. In other words, I guess they're kind of saying, which is clearly something you should agree with, that all these memory challenges are not going to be the same for all autistic people. They're going to be individual. As a result, we need to find out how we can support autistic people for their individual memory challenges. Because I've given you a massive list. You should not be ticking up all the boxes, right? So it's about working 
with your family, your friends, support people, what are the ones that affect me personally? What memory issues do I have and how can I help improve those? So selective amnesia, it's going to have a big impact on your life. It's going to, as I've already said, right, it can affect your health, for goodness sakes, your daily functioning. So I want to, let's just go through some examples of how selective amnesia can affect your life, not only for the autistic person, but for loved ones of autistic people. So it's going to affect relationships, right? It's going to lead to difficulties in remembering important moments shared with loved ones. What will that do? That could impact the depth of your emotional connections, the ability to reminisce about shared experiences. How good, by the way, is getting around with your family and reminiscing? What if you're the odd man out and you can't actually remember? Well, you can't add to that. You know, that's, it's, it's a horrible feeling to have for yourself, but it impacts others. Daily tasks. If you're going to forget key details of daily routines and tasks, and I'm saying aside from particular passions you want to do, because we know in life there are always going to be tasks that need to be done. That's going to lead to frustration, inefficiencies. It's going to make it challenging to maintain a structured and organised lifestyle. Learning and education. This is a big one for me. It always has been, especially with an autistic kid in school. So selective amnesia actually hinders the retention of information that you, you learn in school. You learn during any form of education. Now, that requires additional effort. Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have to review it. You have to go over it again. You have to review and relearn material. So you're learning it or being at least being taught it. Sorry, that's probably a better way of putting it. You're being taught it. It's not getting through. It makes no sense. Therefore, you have to continue to revisit it and go over it until you can somehow learn it. Now, that's okay if you're learning one thing, but if you're going to multiple classes a day, which kids from kinder up to uni do, then that's not possible, right? You don't have the time to relearn everything you've been taught each day. It will snowball to a point where it's impossible. One of the main reasons why I couldn't get right, right way through uni, it's, it just snowballs. Self-identity. If you're going to forget your achievements, milestones, life events, well, if you can't remember good things about you, you're only going to focus on bad things about you. It's going to affect your self-esteem, your self-identity. Because these memories, they actually contribute to building self-esteem, right? If you have a sense of accomplishment and growth, a sense of pride, that's a win. But autistic people very rarely do. And people think, oh, they just, just don't want to. No, no, they actually forget these things. Safety and health. You can't, like I said, if you can't remember your medication schedules, we know when you're supposed to take them, how many, the conditions, the safety precautions, that's going to have serious consequences on your well-being and physical health. Career and work performance. Okay, so you're, you're forgetting important tasks. You're missing deadlines. You forget critical information at work. That's going to lead to decreased job performance, professional setbacks, and probably for autistic people, losing your job. And that is a, not a good scenario for autistic people who are already disproportionately under or unemployed. How about planning and future goals? Well, selective amnesia can affect the ability to plan for the future, set goals, make informed decisions, hinders your personal and professional development. Don't you reckon that's a big one, by the way? If you have selective amnesia and you fail to plan for the future or set goals or make informed decisions based on not remembering things, you, I don't understand how that can't be. I mean, people maybe overlook this. But without plans and goals and informed decisions, you, you will live a life of nothing. Like you'll wake up every day going, oh, why hasn't things happened for me? They haven't happened for you because you haven't, you haven't done anything to make them happen. Like you can't, you know, it's important. Social interactions, another impact. If you can't recall things like I said, past conversations, social events, names of people, that's going to make you look pretty bad to people, right? It's going to impact your ability to engage in meaningful interactions, to maintain meaningful relationships. What about emotional well-being? So the inability to remember past emotional experiences and coping strategies hinders your emotional regulation, your ability to learn from previous challenges. This is a big one, by the way. If you can't remember past emotional experiences, 
then you're clearly not going to remember how they felt and how you overcame them. And then you're clearly not going to be able to use that in the future, right? So remembering experiencing something and how you coped with it is really important for humans. You can put it into practice in the future, but if you can't as an autistic person, it's Groundhog Day. Legal and money matters, right? So obviously selective amnesia is going to have legal and financial implications. Forgetting contractual agreements, financial obligations, important legal details. There's very little wriggle room in that realm. Special occasions, right? It's going to lead to difficulties in remembering these special occasions. That's going to cause disappointment probably in in loved ones, but it's also going to strain relationships, ships with loved ones, (laughs) travel, and getting around, navigating, forgetfulness with directions, landmarks, you, you know, where I was, how did I get here? Sometimes I think my brain, it's like a muscle memory thing. Like I don't know how to, I can't explain to people how to get somewhere, but I can get in the car and get there. But then it's almost like, how did I get here? Sometimes I get to a place and think, how did I get here? I mean, I know I drove there, but anyway, it's like a muscle memory thing. It's obviously going to impact an autistic person, right? Going to familiar, even unfamiliar places becomes more challenging. Now that takes energy, by the way, driving to places and remembering places. And this is an energy thing for an autistic person who already is probably very low on energy because of all the things sucking it out of us on a daily basis. That just, I mean, that just snowballs, right? You're going to start to feel frustrated, anxious, and maybe even scared to travel. Problem solving, another one. If you're forgetting past problem solving approaches, even solutions on how you've solved problems, that's going to affect you, my friend. It's going to affect your ability to effectively address similar issues, similar challenges that pop up in the future. Selective amnesia can also affect the recall of specific details related to your passions and special interests. Have you noticed that sometimes it could be during a period of burnout or something where even the things you love to do, somehow you feel like it's a bit murky, like you've forgotten things that you would never forget. You know what I'm saying? That obviously takes away the enjoyment and the capacity to regulate yourself. Adherence to instructions. If you struggle to remember instructions, remember guidelines, rules, that's going to impact your ability to follow through. Now, this can be anything, my friend. Commitments, daily tasks, assignments. Whatever it is. Financial management is something that we we take for granted, right? Bills, you know, due dates, payments, expenses. If you forget about these things, that's not going to go well for you. That will snowball. And that's, that's no different with what we talked about before with the legal stuff, right? What about the memory of loved ones? If you forget or struggle to retain these cherished memories of your family members, of your friends, of your loved ones, well, that's going to impact the quality of relationships and the shared bonds with loved ones. All right. I want to, I want to give you some strategies. Okay. And then I don't want to see you for a while. (laughs) That's not, that's not true. Please don't take it personally. Uh, How can autistic people, and their loved ones cope with selective amnesia. Well, let's start with some basic ones. How about some journaling? Now, is this something, by the way, people go, oh, no, no. Okay. I'm talking about practicing the art of journaling, keeping a diary, or simply recording important events and emotions. Now, this doesn't have to be in writing, guys, okay? You can dictate it into your phone. You can put it in your notes. You can record it as a video. You see what I'm saying? But what I'm... Listen, just listen. I'm not saying, dear diary, today. What I'm saying is when you feel like you're having important moments, events, emotions, experiences, write them down or record them in some way. You can go back and actually bridge memory gaps with what you have put down. Now, tell me that isn't a good idea. And it isn't hard. Whatever works for you, right? You can use different types of visual aids. Photos, videos, drawings, these kind of things, I think, you know, when you look at a picture or a video or you look at a, I don't know, like a drawing or something, um, for me, it's like pictures on my phone. Oh, my goodness, remember that? 
right? That, but you couldn't have, you couldn't have said, oh, by the way, do you remember this thing? No, I don't. I see a picture. Oh, yeah, and blah, 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 right? That really helps. And it provides the context that somehow helps the autistic brain trigger that memory. I mean, I think there's memory apps as well. I don't know much about them. You should definitely look into them if you think they'll work for you. Routine and structure. This is big for autistic people. Establishing consistent daily routines and structures helps us stay organized, regulated. And what does that mean? If we're regulated, we can remember things, digest things. You could try some mindfulness. I talk about this a lot. I, only because I don't believe autistic people want to do it or believe me, but I, I try it and it helps me. So I guess I just keep going. Anything mindfulness, which just means being present, living in the moment, saying, you know what, I'm not going to do seven things at once. If I want to do this, I'm going to focus on this. Or just sitting or standing or lying. And in effect, just, whether it's opening your eyes or closing your eyes, just relaxing and allowing yourself to be. If your brain goes nuts, let it go nuts. Like that is meditation for an autistic person. It's that simple. Okay? It doesn't need to be sounds and music and noise and saying mantras and whatever it is, right? Just be. I don't know what you think works for you with these kind of strategies. There could be association techniques. There could be memory games. Do you like those kind of things? I, I don't know if I do, <laughs> but these kind of things can help. You, you, you know what works for you. Social support is big. So use your loved ones to help you not only remember, but to talk about and share and retrieve memories. Use your loved ones to help you find the context, the reminders of things, the triggers. Also, you could actually use reminders. Do you do what I do? Do you have like alarms set on your phone? I have like an alarm set on my phone 10 minutes before I, I know, I don't know, I've got to pick up Conan or I know if Conan's on the bus, he'll get home or like I have all these things. I have a preparation time to get ready for things. I have all those notifications, you know, you can use your devices and, and to put in appointments and tasks. I mean, I, I put in, I put things in like my phone as simple as, so doctor haircut, but as simple as, you know, take tablets, right? You, you could put stuff in that actually is something that might be a lifetime appointment, right? So you might say, you know, um, partner's birthday, lifetime, like it's every year it comes up, right? But then you've given it like an alert, like the week before or a day before or whatever, like all these things, special events. If you put them in those, those reminders, that triggers the memory. Multi-sensory learning. So you utilise your multiple senses when acquiring new information. This can actually help improve memory retention. Huh? Okay, so people think, how do you learn, right? Oh, well, you listen and you look. Okay, how do autistic people learn? Right? So, you know, utilize multiple senses that work for you to acquire and retain new information. And this, you know, you could also look into things like memory jogs. I'm itching my eye on, on, the, on the camera, which is amazing. So you're creating like memory jogs to help remember information. Like mental images, acronyms, you know, things that jog your memory. Oh, that's what memory jog. Is that what memory jogs are? What, what's a memory jog? Oh, it's things that jog your memory, he says. Oh, thanks, so, Ryan. Thanks so much for clearing up what a memory jog is. What is it? Oh, it's things that jog your memory. Yeah, that's why it's called memory jogs, you moron. My friend, Autism with Orion Kelly. Catch up on all the episodes at orionkelly.com.au. I really do appreciate you, my friend. Thank you for being here. As always, if you want to reach out and say, hey, you know how to do it on the website or on the socials and check out this video if you want to watch this podcast on my youtube channel orion kelly podcasts until my next podcast thank you so much for your support thank you so much for being here we'll talk soon you've been listening to my friend autism with orion kelly to join the conversation get in touch with orion and binge all the podcasts blogs and videos visit orionkelly.com.au